Good morning, everybody. Are we doing okay? Good. My name is Jonathan. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Um, I don't know if it's customary for you to stand up to worship, but uh, I'm going to ask you if you if you would be willing to do so to stand with us and let, let's begin here. guys for kicking us off so great hi i'm pastor chris so great to have you here at the gathering at bethel uh, we are gathered we do gather in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen and, and this is a what we call a modern worship service but there's an ancient tradition of the church that we greet each other um, we greet each other with the peace of the lord and it's a reminder that 
You know, we may disagree on a lot of things, but we're still united in Christ. And that's what brings us together. And now in biblical times, they, they, they did it with a kiss on the cheek. But you guys not may quite ready for that yet. So if you can sim a, a simply handshake or a fist bump will do. But do, do share the peace of the Lord with those around you.
His grace is sufficient for us today, yes? It is enough for us today, yes? It's the same thing as sufficient, right? Just in case, we have some kids in the room. We'll make sure that everybody's with us, all right? Your grace is enough. We're going to sing that out today. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. song today is Psalm 50, verses 1 through 15. 
The Lord, the Mighty One, is God, and He has spoken. He has summoned all humanity from where the sun rises to where it sets. From Mount Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines in glorious radiance. Our God approaches, and He is not silent. Fire, fire devours everything in his way, and a great storm rages around him. He calls on the heavens above and earth below to witness the judgment of his people. Bring my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by giving sacrifices. Then let the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself will be the judge. O oh, my people, listen as I speak. Here are my charges against you, O Israel. I am God, your God. I have no complaint about your sacrifices or the burnt offerings you constantly offer. But I do not need the bulls from your barns or the goats from your pens. For all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains, and all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For all the world is mine, and everything in it. Do I eat the meat of the bulls? Do I drink the blood of the goats? Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God, and keep the vows you made to the Most High. Then call on me when you're in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory.
pray with me this morning. Father, that is our heart's cry this morning that you would lead us to those who are hurting. God, that we would come in peace and in love just as your son Jesus Christ did for us. We confess today that your grace is enough for us. Forgive us, Father, where we've neglected that truth. Lord, we turn our, our attention to your word right now. May it speak to us. May it fill us. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name we say, amen. amen. Okay, we have a, an exciting addition to our, our worship today. We have the Children's Church, or what we're calling now the Gathering for Kids banner. So is, is the banner ready? Yeah, oh, oh, come on, guys. You missed your... <laughs> yeah, no, they're totally slack. We're going to cut their pay in half. All right. All right, stop, stop. Kids, stand up, and, and we're going to follow the banner up front, and we're going to kind of lead you guys to your uh, Children's Church uh, Gathering for Kids thing. So come on up. Now, now you can start slow. Don't go too fast. Let the kids come. Let the kids... <laughs> See, follow the banner, follow the... <laughs> All right, guys, I want to teach you guys one of our songs we do at uh, chapel at, at, when, we, when we go to chapel for, for Bethel. It's a really simple song, um, so I want you guys to put your, put your hands out like this. You're asking if, like, and we're going to do four verses, we're going to do... Whose side am I standing on? Whose side am I jumping on? Whose side am I praying on? And then whose side am I singing on? Is that third verse? All right, so you do this. And then and it's I'm standing on the Lord's side. Okay, so whose side am I standing on? Standing on the Lord's side. Whose side am I standing on? Standing on the Lord's side. I stand, I stand, I stand, I stand. Standing on the Lord's side. Whose side am I jumping on? Jumping on the Lord's side. Whose side am I jumping on? Jumping on the Lord's side. I jump, I jump, I jump, I jump. Jumping on the Lord's. Whose side am I praying on? Praying on the Lord's side. Whose side am I praying on? Praying on the Lord's side. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. Praying on the Lord's side. Whose side am I singing on? Singing on the Lord's side. Whose side am I singing on? Singing on the Lord. I sing, I sing, I sing, I sing. Singing on the Lord's side. I sing, I sing, I sing, I sing. Singing on the Lord's side. All right, you guys go have a great time at the gathering for kids. Grace, mercy, and peace be from God as we meditate on this word and may this meditation be pleasing in his sight. Amen. Amen. Faith to live in the name of Jesus, the name that is enough, that is sufficient for all that we need. It's really hard to focus on two or more things. Agreed? How many of you think you're a good multitasker. I think I am. I'm really not. It's a myth that you can actually be a, a, a good at doing. What, what ends up happening when you multitask is you just end up being lead at multiple things at the same time. Like you're simultaneously not good at several things instead of being really good at one thing. And that's, but we all have this illusion, right, that we can focus on multiple things. You see, You focus two at, no, can't on, no, see, you can't focus on two things at once. 
And I think we all, deep inside, we really, we know that. Like, we, we, we acknowledge that, but it doesn't stop us from trying to do multiple things at once. Because there are no shortage of things to focus on. So we are distracted by many things. So I want to take a moment here, and um, hopefully you're sitting by someone that, that you kind of like a little bit, or, or at least can feel comfortable talking to. Share, share some of the, the, the distractions in your life that make it hard to focus on what you should be focusing on. My first is the cell phone. I'm, I'm, I'm full confession here, but you got, all right, so go, if you're not sitting by someone, just kind of move around, but just at, at, talk to the person next to you. Share some of the things in your life that, that are distractions that make it hard to focus on what you should be focusing on. You know, maybe you, uh, maybe you feel like this lady right here in the picture, like all these things, like shoes and mail and the cat and all these, Facebook and all these things that are, that someone's whispering in your ear and you're just trying to find this inner peace, this inner focus in the mix of all this chaos around you. Or maybe this guy right here where you're just like, you got notes everywhere and you got all these things you're trying to do and you're just, you're, you're you got so many things pulling for your attention, so many things pulling for your focus. And, and sometimes it's really hard to even remember what it is that you were supposed to focus on. Have you ever gone to a store to buy one thing <laughs> and got home and realized you didn't get the one thing you went there? I mean, you, had a, you bought all this other stuff, and then you get there and you're like, the one thing I actually went to the store for is nowhere to be found. Because well, you get distracted, you know, like, you're like, oh, they got this food over here, they got this thing over there, and, and then you have to go back to get the one thing you didn't get in the first place. And that, we all do it, and we, we laugh because it's true. It's, it's, it's really hard to keep our focus sometimes. And, and, and the world that we live in with all the different things out there doesn't make it any easier. We all struggle to keep our focus where it needs to be. Be. Today we see Paul addressing this idea of focus. And when he's writing to the church and to the Colossians, he's kind of giving them a couple of different contrasts on where your focus can be or should be and where our focus often is. And our reading today is from Colossians chapter 3. We have the few Bibles, we also have the words on the screen. And and he does this in, 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 in response to what we looked at last week, which is this, this whole idea of, you know, this newness that we have in Christ, that we, that we are, that we have been made new, that we're, we've been made alive. We have new life in Christ. And he, and he, he kind of uses this language today that we're going to look at where it's almost like putting on a new shirt or putting on a new, a new wardrobe or a new outfit. And everybody likes a new, you know, a new shirt to put on something new. And he's, he's describing our relationship in Christ to this new thing that we are putting on. And he says this, If you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are here on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death... Therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passions, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry, on account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. And these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them away, things like anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is in all 
and in all. Put on then, this, this language of garment again, like a, a, an article of clothing, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thanksgiving, thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God our Father through him. So Paul is basically saying this, before we even get to this point. If, if your focus is always on what Jesus would have you do, right, then you're always going to do the right thing. Right? Pretty simple, right? If you're, if you're always focused on when, when, when you say something, when you send that email, when you send that text, when you post that thing on social media, if every time you do that, you think to yourself and you focus on, is this what Jesus would want me to do? You'll get it right every time. The problem is, we lose our focus, right? We don't always focus on that. So, and Paul knew the negative things of this earth that the Colossians were tempted to focus on. And, and, and he, he speaks about this in, in sharp contrast from, and, and for a lot of people, you know, if you were, for like me, I, I don't ever remember what it's like to not believe in Jesus. I've always been a person of faith. You know, like I grew up in the church and I never, I mean, I've doubted it, I've questioned it, I've certainly not lived it, but I've, I've always, it's always been there. But he kind of speaks here, and obviously this would have been, the, the reality for to the Colossians would have been, they're all new believers, right? Because the, the church is a new thing. I mean, Jesus, this has been like 20 years of Jesus' death and resurrection. So none of, none of this audience probably would have been raised in the sense of in the church. The, this, they all would have been new believers in that sense. So for them, and for maybe some of you, there, there's a sharp contrast to kind of the way I was before I knew Christ, or before I be, you know, became a person of faith. Or maybe in times that you've slid away from that and come back, but you you kind of know this, this sharp contrast. And so he's saying that these negative things of the earth, that if you focus on those, um, you will be distracted from your calling in Jesus. So, and he, and he, he makes a pretty significant list here. He says things like sexual morality, impurity, passions, evil desires, covetousness, idolatry, and the, you know, lying, um, Malice, wrath, anger, slander, obscene talk, saying things that you regret. And he knew that, that not only did the, was that the way that the Colossians had been before they came to faith in Christ, he also knew, because he knew it too well for himself, that's the way we still continue to be when we lose our focus. Paul will say later in Romans... The good things I, I want to do, I don't do. And the bad things I don't want to do, I keep doing. And he, and he throws up this question, you know, where do I go? Who's going to deliver me from this body of death? You know, Luther said that we are simultaneously a saint and a sinner. And, that, and he doesn't say we're half saint, half sinner. He says we're simultaneously 100% a saint, redeemed in Christ, and 100% a sinner, who keeps doing stupid things, keeps living out this list of things that, because we, we can't always keep our focus on Jesus. We get distracted by these things of the world. And that is what Paul is talking about here, that somehow we live in this paradox where, I mean, be honest with yourselves. Are, are there times when the, in the same conversation you can say something that's really complimentary and really helpful and then say something that's really stupid? And sometimes it's like not even the same day, it can be the same conversation. And we, and we all do it all the time. And so he's saying, if, but if we focus on things of this earth, if we focus on 
Facebook and follow me sports team. And, and all those things are great in, in, in moderation. But if, if we let those become the focus of our lives, you know, Luther even said things like whatever we where we go to for the good things in life where and where we go to in times of need, that is our God. I mean, and so the things of this earth, those can become our idols. Those can, those can become the things that lead us, distract us. And through this list of things that we are all tempted to do, just like the Colossians were. So in contrast to that, Paul wanted them to put on their new self and things that come from Jesus above. And he even he uses this language of don't focus on, on, the, on, on things of the earth, focus on things from heaven. And we, talk, we talked about this several times as we've gone through this, this study of Galatians and Colossians. But this idea that the reason we, we focus on Jesus, and we even said that, you know, John tells us, right, that in the beginning was the Word. The Word is not just a book. The Word is Jesus. The Word, this points us to the Word, but the actual Word was there before creation, and that was Jesus. Before there was a book, before there was, and he, saw, he listed Psalms and Spirit, before we had Psalms, before we had any of that, the Word of God was there in the person of Jesus. So if we focus Instead of on things of from heaven, meaning the word of God and, and, and the model that, that, that Jesus gave us in his life, then what comes out of us instead of the, the, the negative list is this. He says be, these things like be, be compassionate, heart, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another, like sharing each other's burdens, as he talked about in Galatians. Um, if you have a complaint with one another, if you're in conflict with someone, forgive each other. Just as, and he, he kind of doubles down on this forgiveness, saying, why, why is forgiveness so important? Why? Because we've been forgiven. We, we, we've received the forgiveness from God. And, and when, when it's sometimes really hard to forgive certain people, I think what Paul is saying here, when it's really hard to forgive someone, remember how much you've been forgiven. And remember how much God has forgiven you. Remember how much Jesus on the cross took your mess ups and you have been forgiven. We talked about that last week. That you're, not only have you been forgiven for your sins. You, so because you've been forgiven, then uh, you can't help but forgive. And then he says this, you know, and he, and then he goes on to talk about love. He says this. He says, most importantly... Not live. No. Most importantly, they were to put on love, which binds all things together in perfect harmony. When you invest, when you pour into love, when you pour into loving because you've been loved, right? The same thing with same thing as forgiveness. Why do we love? What, what, what gives us the ability to love? That we've been loved first. Because we, we, we understand because God so loved the world, right, that despite our brokenness, despite the mistakes we make, despite all the, the, the horrible things in this world, he still loved this world. And he sent his son to redeem this, to, to buy it back, to restore it, to put it back together. And, and, and in love... It's hard to stay angry at someone you love, right? And, that, and, that's, and, that, and, that, and that's why love is so important. That's why it brings us together in harmony. That's why we share the peace. I talked about that at the beginning of the service. You know, that, that this, this sharing of the peace is that, is that reminder that we, we, God is calling us to live in harmony with each other. And, and, and sometimes Paul uses the word unity, to be united. Despite our, we may have different, we may vote for different, you know, politicians. We may support different sports teams. We may disagree on a lot of things. We may not like drums in church. We may love drums in church, whatever. But in love, when we focus on love, the love that we've received from Christ, but also the love that he is, that we give to each other, then it creates this harmony. It creates this unity and it creates People actually working together to do good in the world and to make a positive impact on the world. 
So that's, if we focus on Jesus, what comes out of that is love and harmony. And he says this, that we, we're we having the faith to do everything in the name of Jesus. It, this whole series has been about living by faith, right? Paul says the righteous shall live by faith in Galatians. And so it takes faith to do things in the name of Jesus. It takes faith to, when Jesus says die to self, right? Deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. It takes faith to say Jesus' way is better and I'm going to put aside what I want. So often, you know, we, we ask the question, what do I want? And a lot of the decisions we make in life are based on what, what do I want? What, or what do I deserve? Or what do I feel like I want? Or what do I think I want? Or, you know, what, what's going to make me happy? But that's the wrong question. As followers of Jesus, we shouldn't be asking questions based on what I want, based on what I feel, based on what I think. We should be asking questions based on, or making decisions based on what does Jesus want. What is the Holy Spirit leading me to do? What can I do in response to the love that Christ has shown me? And when we focus on those things, our lives and, and our impact in the world is going to be so much more real and, and, and powerful. So what about us today? Where is our focus? If you're like me, your focus is on a lot of things. And a lot of things that it shouldn't be on. But it, this is a, a great reminder today that when we put our focus on Jesus, like the story where, you know, where, where the, the famous story where, where Peter, you know, jumps out of the boat and starts walking on water. And as long as he's focused on Jesus, he's fine. But what happens? He looks away. Oh, it's a storm. Oh, it's, I'm standing on water. Oh, what the heck am I doing? And he starts to to sink, right? And that, that happens with all of us. Is if, but if we can keep our focus on Jesus, or when we keep our focus on Jesus, we can accomplish some pretty amazing things, not just as individuals, but as families, or as a family of faith, as a community. It's like we're talking about here in a little bit, Academy 4, mentoring kids at our local public school, or the work that we do at White Rock Center of Hope. I mean, it, it's amazing what things we can do when we're led by Jesus, when our focus is on Jesus. And yet, we still live, again, in this tension, right? Between, if no matter how much we try to focus on Jesus, we always get distracted. We always end up messing up. And that's when forgiveness is so powerful. To be reminded that our standing before God is not based on how well we focus, but it's how well God focuses on his love for us. Amen? Amen. I mean, I'm going to pray and then welcome our praise team to come back up and, and sing a song of response and, as we confess our faith through song. Dear God, we thank you for this day. Um, I am a very distracted human being. I focus on a lot of things that really, at the end of the day, don't matter that much. And I, and I know that that, that that same thought resonates with a lot of people here today. We, we all have so many things pulling for our attention and our focus and when all we really need is you. So help us to respond to your spirit in our lives, in our hearts, pointing us back to you and the work that you've done for us. We pray these things in your son's name. Amen. If you'd like to stand and join us in song, it would be great.
sick and hospitalized and recovering, Larry, Paula, Sam, Renee, Nancy, Lynn, and to the work of the spiritual leadership team as they make plans for the fall, the connection between Bethel and the Early Learning Center, the gathering of Bethel, the people of Ukraine, and for continued blessing on people as they recover from months of challenges due to COVID-19. Ongoing prayers goes to Anne, Cindy, Olivia, Marilyn, Katie, David, Sharon, Kenneth, Mark, John, Risa, Ruth, Sean, Kevin, Ruth, and that Bethel disciples will be active in worship and growing service and care. And brothers, at this moment we come together uh, to ask God to guide us in difficult times and challenges. Uh, hurts, and any kind of uh, pressure that his people may be going through. We pray that you guide us in all truth, in your word, in your scripture, uh, and bless us, Lord, that we uh, follow you in living by faith and following your footsteps in putting our focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And at this time, brothers, uh, Colossians 3 says something really uh, important. It says that Christ is in all and all. And it's hard to keep focus on that uh, because we are sinners and saints at the same time. But let's focus on what God has done for us through Jesus Christ on the cross uh, because we are sinful, but as we come to the cross, we have the forgiveness of sins, everything that is available on the cross for us. So we acknowledge that we are by nature sinful, and we lose focus from time to time, 
There are those things who keep us out of focus. But as we focus in Christ and patience and love and kindness and all these that's available for us through Christ, uh, we know that we'll lead to the path of forgiveness available at the cross. And so at this time, if you take a moment to focus on those things that keep you away from what's available for you and focus more on what God has for you. Brothers, as we confess they are by nature sinful, uh, God has forgiven us by his word and his promise on the cross. And as the song came about today, his grace is enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. Having confessed our faith and confessed our sin, now we come to the table of our Lord. Where Jesus, you know, did it all. And we're reminded of that as we participate in his body and blood. It was the night of his betrayal. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took the bread, he broke it, gave his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, having given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you eat and drink this. In remembrance of me. Our statement about what we believe as Lutheran uh, Christians about communion is, is in the bulletin. Um, if you have already been instructed and in, in, have received your first communion, we do invite you to come up and receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, if, if, if you've not been instructed yet or, or not feeling comfortable taking communion today, you can always just do this and receive a blessing. We're going to commune uh, the band first and then I will invite you up when it's time. My lips will praise you, for you are holy. My voice will ever rise before your throne. My heart will love you, for you are lovely, and you have called me to become your 
Now may the eating and drinking of Christ's very own body and blood strengthen and preserve us this day forward. Depart from this table and from this time of worship. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our closing song. announcements today, a couple of special presentations. Um, Richard, our, our congregation president, will have a few words in a moment, but first we have uh, one of our partners, and one of the ways that we, you know, keep our focus on Jesus by serving others is, is by the way we serve at our local elementary school, Highland Meadows, and one of the ways we do that is through this program called Academy 4, uh, where, we, where we provide mentors, uh, not just Bethel, but our community provides mentors for every fourth grader. we got a couple of people from Academy 4, who are going to tell us a little bit more about that program. Good morning. Um, I'm Kamiko, and this is Daniela. She is going to be your site coordinator and pretty much the go-between for your alma mentors here and Highland Meadows. I just want to start by telling you a few things about Academy 4. So, once a month, on a Friday afternoon, we come together and we provide a mentor for every fourth grader. We make it easy for this commitment, and it's just once a month, 90 minutes, nine times over the school year. We spend a Friday with our fourth graders, and the fourth graders have 90 minutes additionally to do spark clubs, which are enrichment clubs, which are which they do arts, crafts, music, sports, and whatever else you can think of. Here's what we're gonna talk about today. What makes Academy 4 special, what we did for you, and what's the impact. So first, here's what's special about what we do. The most special part about Academy 4 is that we provide a mentor for every fourth grader. And this underscores just how special it is when you show up and connect with a fourth grader. You can give them what they want the most, which is undivided attention and expression of care. And 
We all serve together collectively. We get together to be a part of the community, to fourth graders and the entire school. We truly make them feel special. It's the relationship in Academy 4 that makes it truly special. This begins with our partnerships with local churches like yourselves and the community. This helps us build relationships with more than 32 volunteers serving in our program this year. Next, the detail about what we do. What we do. What do we do? Sorry. It's a little... I haven't had much coffee. <laughs> we build relationships through mentoring fourth graders in leadership. We are on campus each month during the school year nine times. What's the impact? Our Every fourth grader's favorite day of the month is Academy Four Friday. Once a month on a Friday afternoon, elementary school campuses are transformed as volunteers serve together to build up and encourage fourth graders. Through our partnership with the local church, Academy Four provides a mentor for every fourth grader in the economically disadvantaged schools we serve. There are three main parts to Academy Four Fridays, spark clubs, leaders assembly, and mentoring time. Academy Four Fridays begin with our possibility expanding spark clubs. In groups of eight to 10, each fourth grader gets to participate in two 45-minute clubs. They get to do those same two clubs throughout the year. This includes clubs like cooking, robotics, science clubs, art clubs, music clubs, our golf club by the first tee, and other sports clubs, all run by our wonderful volunteer club leaders. Academy Four Spark Clubs provide a variety of activities that our fourth graders may not normally get to experience and spark their imagination, creativity, learning, and fun. As students are wrapping up their spark clubs, our mentors begin to show up. They go through a brief training session to review the focus of the day. After mentor training, the students come in, connect with their mentors, and our leaders assembly begins. Everyone's favorite fourth grader, Rudy, introduces the fourth graders and their mentors to the leadership quality of the month from our leaders across him. Students learn these seven leadership qualities during the year. The day continues with the fourth graders' favorite part of the day, spending one-on-one -on -one time with their mentors. Mentoring time begins with fourth graders and mentors answering questions and doing activities in their leaders' toolbox workbooks. Half their time is spent doing that, and the second half is spent playing board games, reading books, working on crafts, and doing one-on-one -on -one activities outside, enjoying each other's company. Over the course of the year, fourth graders learn to be leaders as they develop life-impacting relationships with caring adults. Our Academy Four Fridays end with everyone watching a recap video of their time together from the previous month. Fist bumps and high fives are exchanged as goodbyes are said, and mentors and fourth graders begin to look forward to the next month. So what's the impact? Our program is our relationship. We do cult cultivate meaningful relationships. We also have impact on student engagement, classroom behavior, outlook on life, solid worth, leadership, and attend attendance. What principal wouldn't want that? So we invite you to join us, and we provide the training, we provide the curriculum, we provide the activities for you guys to enjoy. I want to just tell you, you do make a difference in these children's lives. The only way I can tell you that is I was a mentor and I was a substitute mentor. And let me tell you, when I substituted at the very end of the year and I was subbing for a, a mentor who showed up all year round, the look on that child's face when I showed up as the substitute and he goes, where's my mentor? <laughs> it was impactful. That meant that he enjoyed spending that time with that mentor and it meant a lot to him. And even though I was still there, it did make an impact. So I hope that you will come meet Daniela and join our Academy for Mentoring program. There's a table uh, where you can get more information about the mentoring program and then 
Richard Simpson, our congregational president, has an important announcement as well. As you all of you should know, we're in, this, uh, in the process of calling a, a new pastor. Pastor Chris is an interim pastor. We're trying to get rid of him as interim and replace him with a new senior pastor, which may be Pastor Chris. Well, actually, if we select one of the two choices we have, it will be a Pastor Chris. <laughs> it, we have two candidates. The, the call committee has, has whittled the list down to two specific candidates. One of them is Pastor Chris Holden here at Bethel. The other is Pastor Chris... The other is Pastor Chris Singer from Trinity Klein Lutheran Church in Spring, Texas. We will have a meet and greet for them each separately. On Wednesday, we'll meet Pastor Chris Singer at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And on Saturday night, we'll meet officially our candidate, Pastor Chris Holder, at 6 p.m. And we really encourage everyone to try to be here or to watch it on, on live stream because it's really important that, that we all learn who our, our candidates are and what about them that you feel is important and let you ask questions for uh, maybe learning more about it. So we're really encouraged to come out or to watch it live stream because it's very important for the congregation. Thank you. One of the announcements I want to bring to your attention is uh, on September 11th, we're going to have a Get to Know More About Bethel luncheon. Uh, child care will be provided, but you know some of you may be new to Bethel or, 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 or you know visiting or whatever, or just want to know more about like, kind of what's going to be happening at Bethel, what Academy for uh, all the other ministries that we're involved in. But you can get to know more about Learn more about Bethel. Please plan on, on being here, staying for lunch. Lunch will be provided. Child care will be provided. It's going to be for about an hour. Uh, you'll learn more about what all the great things going on at Bethel. That's going to be September 11th. Um, my email is on there. Uh, just email me and let me know that you're going to come and how many. And uh, we'll be ready for that. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>